In this video, we're going to talk about the basics of atoms and the structure of atoms. This video is specifically for people who are preparing for the T's exam. So many of the T's prep materials that I've found are confusing and impossible to understand. So I wanted to try and teach this stuff in a way that is crystal clear. I've put together a short course and you can check it out at the link in the description. I've also put some resources there that I know will be helpful. Okay, so questions about atoms are some of the most common chemistry questions on the T's and you'll definitely see at least one or two. So even if you don't remember anything about atoms from the last time you took chemistry, we'll start at the very beginning and build up our knowledge so you can answer all of the common questions that you might run into. Okay, so what's an atom? That's a pretty good place to start at the beginning. Well, if you could look really closely at any object, if you could zoom in zillions and zillions of times into anything, you'd see that it's made of tiny balls or particles called atoms. You can see this in the copper ring, the water in the glass, and in this grain of table salt. So we can say that atoms are tiny particles that make up everything, all stuff. Sometimes these atoms would be arranged in groups called molecules. You see that here in the water. And sometimes the atoms would be arranged in neat grids, like in the copper and in the salt. You can also see that there are different types of atoms. Here we're showing them with different colors. For example, a copper ring is made of copper atoms. Water is made of two types of atoms, hydrogen and oxygen. And table salt is made of two different types of atoms, sodium and chlorine. These different types of atoms are called elements. Copper, hydrogen, oxygen, sodium, and chlorine are all different elements. We're showing just a few here, but there are over a hundred different elements in nature. We'll talk more about all those elements in another video. But to review the main points for here, atoms make up everything, and there are different types of atoms. These are elements. Now, let's look at atoms even closer. If you zoomed in on a little pile of pure carbon, basically charcoal or coal can be pure carbon, you'd find trillions of carbon atoms. Now, so far, we've just been showing atoms as tiny colored balls, but that's a simplification. Atoms are far more complicated. If you zoomed in even deeper into one atom itself, you'd see that atom has a structure. This is what just one carbon atom would look like. And every atom contains smaller particles that we call subatomic particles. You can see them here. Subatomic particles are smaller than atoms and they make up atoms. There are three main types of subatomic particles. The electrons, these are shown in kind of greenish gray. The protons, these are in red. And the neutrons, those are shown here in blue. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. Now, the tease expects you to know some information about these subatomic particles and how they relate to each other. So let's take a closer look. The first thing to understand is that an atom has a particular structure. The protons, neutrons, and electrons aren't just jumbled together. First, the protons and neutrons are found in the center of the atom, in what we call the nucleus. The nucleus is right here. And now the electrons kind of move around outside of the nucleus. We'll focus on them later. So, nucleus here, protons and neutrons, and electrons out here. Now, let's look at the protons and neutrons that we find in the nucleus, and we're going to focus on their characteristics. First off, electrical charge. The proton has a plus one electrical charge. And 
The neutron is neutral, just like its name suggests. It has zero charge. And you'll see that the charge is often written on drawings of these particles. Okay, so for the proton, here's a plus sign, and nothing on the neutron, zero. So, plus one, zero. Okay, now, how much do these particles weigh? In more technical terms, we'd ask, what is their mass? Well, honestly, they don't weigh much. They're tiny. If we wrote their mass in grams, it would look like this. <laughs> Whoa, they both weigh about the same, and it's this many grams. This is a lot of zeros. And what a pain it would be to write this number over and over and over. So you know what's easier? We just say that this tiny, tiny, tiny amount of grams is equal to one AMU. The AMU stands for atomic mass unit. So this tiny amount of grams equals one AMU. That's a lot easier than writing this number over and over and over again. So we can just say that the proton and the neutron both weigh one atomic mass unit. That's a lot easier. Okay, what about the electrons? Let's circle back to them. The electron is even smaller than a proton or a neutron, and it's so small, it's so light, that we just assume that it has a mass of zero AMU. It basically weighs nothing compared to these two other subatomic particles. And for electrical charge, it has a minus one charge. And you'll see there's a minus sign on the drawing of the electron. So to review, let's look at this diagram and this chart. It's really important to have all of this stuff memorized. A proton is plus one and has a mass of one AMU. A neutron is neutral with a mass of one AMU. And an electron has a charge of uh, negative one and basically has a mass of zero. The protons and neutrons live in the nucleus, which is in the center of the atom. Now that we've covered these basics, let's try out a tease question. This one is pretty straightforward. Which statement about subatomic particles is false? We're looking for the wrong choice here, the choice that has the wrong information. Let's put our chart here so we can go over the answer choices. But for the test, you want to make sure that you have completely memorized this information. Okay, choice A says, an electron has a negative one charge and a mass of one AMU. Well, it does have a minus one charge, but its mass is basically nothing, much, much, much smaller than one AMU. So, this is probably our false statement right off the bat. But it's often important to glance over the others just to make sure that we're right. So, B, yep, the proton has a plus one charge and a mass of one AMU, so that's true. We're gonna get rid of it because we're looking for the false statement. C, the nucleus is indeed made up of protons and neutrons right there. And finally, neutron is neutral, yes it is, and the neutron has a mass of one AMU, so we can get rid of that as well. And choice A is definitely our correct answer. Now, let's talk more about these electrons outside of the nucleus. What are they doing? And specifically, how are they organized? First off, the electrons are constantly moving around. You'll often see simple diagrams of atoms like this that show the electrons as if they're spinning or orbiting around the nucleus, uh, kind of the way planets orbit around the sun. Now this drawing doesn't show that movement, but remember that these electrons, they're not just stuck in place, they're in motion. Now one important thing that this diagram does show is that the electrons are arranged into different areas, which are called energy levels or shells, okay? Here's one energy level and it contains two electrons. And then out here, here is another energy level and it contains four electrons. Electrons live in these energy levels or shells. 
The most important thing to know about the energy levels is that the outermost energy level, the one that's furthest out, is called the valence level or the valence shell. On carbon here, the outermost energy level is this one, so this is the valence level. And the electrons in the valence level are called valence electrons. Here's one. Carbon has four valence electrons. One, two, three, four. We'll talk about how these are important in another lesson, but I'll tell you right now, valence electrons are super important for chemical bonding, which is when atoms come together to attach to each other. So, energy levels, valence level, and valence electrons. Okay, now here's something I gotta tell you. If you're trying to learn about electrons from most T's books or videos, you're gonna feel a lot like this person, totally confused. It feels like these resources don't know what they're talking about. They can't explain it clearly. You might see them talking about electron highways and electron lanes, and you'll see tables with letters like S, P, D, and F. Seriously. I have a PhD in this stuff. I know what they're trying to say, but I couldn't understand it the way they're explaining it. Okay, so it's not just you if you're super confused. It confuses me too. So listen, here's what they're trying to say, but they can't explain it in a simple way, okay? It turns out that drawings or depictions of the atom like this are a little outdated. They're a little old fashioned. Scientists have learned that electrons don't actually orbit around in circles like this. We now know that instead, Electrons buzz around randomly, all over the place, kind of like little insects or flies, and they buzz around in 3D shapes, and these 3D shapes are called orbitals. For example, this sphere here, they buzz around in the shape of a ball, just like that. These orbitals, these shapes, are often called electron clouds and are drawn like this. And there are different kinds of electron clouds with names like S, P, D, and F. But this stuff is way, way, way too complicated, okay? The good news is it is almost guaranteed that you won't see this complicated stuff on the T's exam, okay? It's not worth worrying about. They may mention this stuff in a prep book or video to sound fancy or to sound scary, but don't worry about it, okay? The T's pretty much only sticks to this old-fashioned way of drawing the atom. And that's how we will be talking about the atom in these lessons. We don't worry about the orbitals and the clouds and the letters. We just assume that electrons live in circular energy levels or shells, okay? So if you've been confused by this stuff, you can breathe a sigh of relief, okay? It's not essential, it's not important, and we're gonna stick with a simple and straightforward. Okay, so let's do a quick review of everything we've learned in this lesson, and then we'll wrap up with two practice tease questions. In review, atoms are tiny particles that make up everything, and there are different kinds of atoms called elements. If we look closely at one atom, it has a very particular structure. Protons and neutrons in the nucleus and electrons moving outside the nucleus. Protons have a charge of plus one and a mass of one AMU. Neutrons have a charge of zero, they're neutral and a mass of one AMU, and electrons have a charge of negative one and essentially no mass, zero AMU. And finally, electrons are always moving and they're organized into energy levels or shells. The energy level that is furthest out is known as the valence level or valence shell, and it contains the valence electrons. This atom has four valence electrons. Okay, so now some practice problems. 
This here is one of those new T7 drag and drop ordering questions. Below is a model of an oxygen atom. Drag the correct term to the appropriate place. Well, you can't drag on the computer screen for a video, but you can pause this video and mentally answer the question. When you pick up, we'll see how well you did. Okay, ready for the answer? This arrow here is pointing to a subatomic particle that doesn't have a charge. So it's neutral, no charge, this is the neutron. And this arrow is pointing to a subatomic particle that has a plus sign on it. That means it has a positive charge, so it would be a proton. The negative particles outside the nucleus are the electrons, so that's an electron. And finally, this right here, the outermost shell, is the valence shell. Here's the last practice problem. How many valence electrons are in the atom below? This is a diagram of an atom that's a little bit different than the ones we've seen before. And the T's will use a variety of different drawings for the atom, so it's good to get used to seeing different ones. This diagram's different, but it's still got the same basic parts. Here's the nucleus, and then there are three energy levels. One, two, three, and those energy levels contain electrons. The valence level, as we've learned, is the outermost energy level, and it contains just one electron right up here, so our answer is one. As you can see, this wasn't a hard question, but if you don't know what valence electrons are, you just can't answer it. So, now you have a really strong foundation on the basics of atoms and atomic structure. In the next lessons, we'll start looking at the three subatomic particles in more detail, starting with protons and their relationship to atomic number. Again, check out the description below the video for the link to the full course, and I look forward to helping you crush the T's.